Welcome to the Orlando Holiday Guide podcast show presented by Hugh Hattrick in association with its Orlando Time Facebook page. Trusted, acknowledged and respected. Hello everyone and thanks for watching and listening to Hattrick's Orlando Holiday Guide. Now over the weekend, I'm sure unless you were off the internet completely or off any kind of media, you would have heard that Thomas Cook has gone bust. Um, for quite a while it has been in trouble, um, but today, mon as of Monday morning, it has officially gone bust. Now, there is a special UK and Ireland helpline, so if you get your pens and papers out, I'll give it to you just now. That's 0300 303 2800, so if you're abroad um, or if you're in the UK, that number, um, if you're if you're phoning it yeah, from the UK and Ireland, that number will work. 0300 303 2800. You can also go on to the UK Foreign Office um, website as well, and that will give you information about what to do if you're stuck. So this is the main topic of the day. Um, now, I'm going to play this very, very good piece from um, Martin's uh, Martin Lewis, which is the advice that he's offering to Thomas Cook customers, because I think this will probably cover a lot of your questions, and we will go from there. So without further ado, I'll play the video. On the weekend, where the expectation this will come, at, you know, it is a sad day for many staff and customers of Thomas Cook. There'll be many people in a state of panic and anxiety right now. The big picture is most people should either be returned, continue their holiday and return home. And if they haven't gone, they should get a refund. That isn't to say that, and, and we, we can't stick to the official line because it would be wrong. There won't be some sticky situations and there won't be some people who fall through the crack. Through that right now is where we are. Okay, so lots of people getting in touch. Um, Natalie on Facebook, we're due to fly home from Crete to Bristol tomorrow. We've heard nothing. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I'm just hoping I have enough meds if we can't get home as planned. So, for people who are abroad right now, the if you go to the Thomas Cook website, it will link you through to a Civil Aviation Authority website. On there, when you click through to your destination, it will tell you information about flights home. Now, when I click through a few, they only at the moment have information about flights today, and they says the others will be updated tomorrow. This is a full-scale CAA repatriation. Everybody who's abroad, and interestingly, we, there is only those who have atoll protection technically should be flown home, but the government seems to be flying everybody home who has flight only. There will be a few people in a few destinations who will not have flights back, and then they're being asked to book by themselves and reclaim the cost. So flying home should work for everybody, should get home. But I do have to put the caveat in, this is the biggest ever repatriation and refund operation we've seen. Everything will hopefully go smoothly and the CAA has a helpline if it doesn't. I was very worried about people. Um, I mean, I'm worried about everybody, but particularly if you have invested a lot in a wedding, you know, the, the sort of, you know, the most kind of precious yeah. moment. John says, I'm getting married five weeks tomorrow in Mexico. 90% of guests have booked through Thomas Cook. It looks like my mum, my sister, and my whole family won't be able to come. Now, if it's if it's five weeks, you should be able to get an alternative, but I suppose the cost is now. Well, the cost will go up because you know, supply and demand means yes. the cost will go up when there is. When and nobody's going to compensate you for that, are No, unless you have wedding insurance, which isn't something I normally suggest people get, but a wedding abroad, you may want to have it. You want to look at your wedding insurance. So let's just go through some of the other routes for people who haven't travelled yet. Mm. If you haven't travelled yet, if yours is an at all protected holiday, you should get a refund. Anybody who booked flight only is the risk where it may not be at all protected. If it's not at all protected, well, a lot of people are saying travel insurance. That's going to be unlikely. Most travel insurance policies don't include, include travel firm collapse cover. A few do, most don't. So you won't get it back from them. Your next protection is how you pay. If you paid on a credit card, there's this thing I talk about all the time called Section 75 protection, which means the credit card company is jointly liable with the retailer. Jointly. Remember that. Jointly. If they send you to Thomas Cook jointly, they have just as much liability. You, you can deal with them in the first instance. But this is the other thing that people have wrongly been saying. If I'm booking holiday off peers and you're my travel agent, because I, if I pay you, that can break the causal link that Section 75 means and means I am not owed money under Section 75. And we're waiting to see whether there are any cases here. If that happens and you paid on the credit card, then you'll need to use the same protection that debit card customers have, which is called chargeback, which is where you ask 
Visa or MasterCard, you go through your bank and say, I would like you to refund my money because I have not received my goods. So that's what you're looking oh, at. So there is some coverage for people with debit cards because Lucas it's not a legal paid £3,600 <coughs> for flights to go take his children to Disneyland and if, he's very worried he paid on debit card. If you if you just got flights, if so you don't have any other protections out there, check your other protections, check your travel insurance first, then you can go to the debit card company and ask it to do a charge back and you should get the money back. You know what also, Marty, it's done, I mean, this raises every time anybody books any holiday now in this way through any of these tour operators, make sure you know your rights actually when you book. No, no bad thing and, to, to make yourself. And if anyone's paid on check or cash. Yeah. Nothing. Right. If flight only. And and this is why so I don't pay with check. I, 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 no, I, look, I've said this on the program many times before. I pay for all transactions over hundred pounds on a credit card, so I get sections that pay it off in full. So I get section yeah. seventy five protection. And if that doesn't work, I get charge back protection. Bank transfers, check, cash. Okay, Martin, good advice, as always, thank you very much. Now, that was a really informative piece by Martin Lewis on um, Good Morning Britain this morning. Now, I have another video for you, which is from Euronews, and this is a very important one because, again, it shows the details from the Foreign Office. And so if you're out there wondering what to do, then, again, this is an important piece of information for you. Um, so I'll play the video and you can um, take notes if necessary. The aviation regulator is now having to step in to carry out a major repatriation. If you're overseas on a Thomas Cook uh, holiday, uh, then you can continue to enjoy your holiday. The CAA is launching uh, a repatriation. Uh, this is the largest repatriation uh, since the Second World War, and we will be bringing home everybody um, back, back to the UK as close as possible to their return date. In all, the company has around 600,000 customers abroad. Countries in the rest of Europe will now be making their own arrangements to get travellers home. Thomas Cook has struggled to cope with a 1.9 billion euro debt burden. The 11th hour meeting last night came after the company had agreed to a 1 billion euro bailout, but it was then told to find another 220 million euros, a step too far for the company. Trent Murray, Euronews. Well, for all the latest on this, we're joined by Euronews journalist Ryan Thompson. Ryan, good morning. Just give me an idea of the sheer scale of this. How many people have been affected, whether that's people on holiday already, those planning to go away, and of course, the staff of Thomas Cook? Well, good morning, Rosie. Well, 600,000 travellers are concerned, and they're spread all around the world. 150 of them, as you mentioned earlier, uh, British nationals. And many of them are uh, stuck around the Mediterranean, countries like Tunisia, Turkey, Greece, uh, though some as far away as uh, Las Vegas or Vietnam. This is a huge operation that's just shutting down quite suddenly. Uh, 19 million travelers use Thomas Cook and they're spread around uh, 16 countries regularly. Uh, so what we're entering into here is this, as I said, huge period of uncertainty for the travelers, uh, but also for the tour operators and the tour partners. Uh, of course, it is Thomas Cook that sells uh, a lot of these packages and operates these flights, but they work side by side with many resorts and charter bus operators. Uh, we've actually seen overnight at a resort in uh, Tunisia, a group of tourists held hostage by the resort. They had prepaid Thomas Cook for their accommodation, uh, but now they found that the resort was asking them to pay up now if they wanted to leave. And those people have now, of course, been allowed to, to leave since. But if you're on holiday, this is really stressful. For those people who are abroad, how are they going to get back and what's it going to cost them? Well, let's start with the UK. Uh, the Civil Aviation Authority has begun what is the largest peacetime repatriation effort uh, that we've ever seen. Uh, they've started a website uh, for affected customers to find the information and begin the process of figuring out, how am I going to get home? Uh, what they're aiming to do is get people home as soon as possible uh, with the most limited amount of disruptions on the planned dates. Uh, for some people and a small number of destinations, they'll be rebooked uh, on other commercial flights, but for most of them, they'll be you sent home on special charter flights uh, via the CAA. Uh, it's very organized, but patients should be minded in this situation. Uh, they might not be able to fly straight into the regional airport that they uh, previously flew out of. They might have to go through larger cities like London or Manchester. Uh, it also could take up to two weeks to get everyone home uh, on time. Now, if you're overseas and you're supposed to go home today or tomorrow, do not go to the airport. Go to the website and begin to find out how you're going to get home uh, via an insurance company or via the CAA. Now, we should point out here that 
Thomas Cook is way beyond just a UK-based travel agency. Uh, it trades on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange as well, and has a huge customer base in Germany. Uh, on the German side of things, what they're saying uh, is you should contact your insurance company. The insurance companies will be responsible for coordinating the response uh, to get these German customers back home. So not seeing the same level of response from the UK then from in Germany. What if my holiday's in a couple of weeks' time? Do I bother packing my bags? Am I still going? Well, if you have a vacation on the radar, it might be time to start thinking about a staycation or doing something different a bit more locally. Uh, the good news is if you have booked a package holiday, you will get all those funds back. Uh, maybe not immediately, but it's guaranteed that you will get them back. Uh, customers who book Thomas Cook flights are, are a bit out of luck. They will not get those money back as soon as possible. Uh, I know for many, repayment means nothing, but the frustration of cancelled holiday plans can really weigh down a lot. I've gone on to the Foreign Office website, which is simply www.gov.uk-government. And then if you look at Foreign Commonwealth, it'll come up when you put in the gov.uk and you can put it in there. Now, it's got a special helpline that if you're abroad, you can use this, which is plus four four one seven five three 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 zero three three zero. And basically, um, the government have, have stepped in to operate uh, and to an operation to repatriate UK customers stranded abroad. And it is the largest one in history. So the key thing is, Phone the numbers. If you're out with the UK and you're on holiday with Thomas Cook, make sure you phone that number, get through to um, either phone at the number or go on the website to try and find out more information. Um, hopefully earlier on with the videos that I've already given you, you would have seen um, what your options are. Now as well, if you've taken a package holiday, you should be covered. They do say, you know, if you're coming back in the next couple of days, then yes, go onto the websites, phone up the numbers because you're due to come home. If it's going to be a bit longer, it just says be patient and you should either hear from um, somebody representing Thomas Cook, like the insurance company um, or the government. But obviously it's a good idea to keep in check and make sure that you um, do what you can to find out what is happening. If you are abroad, well, what I would say is enjoy your holiday as much as you can, um, especially if you're in Orlando. Um, well, the weather is hopefully quite reasonable. Um, and I would make sure that, um, yeah, don't let it weigh up too much because at the end of the day, they will get you back. Um, basically, you just need to know what's happening and you can probably get that. I wouldn't have thought in too much time of going onto the website or phoning the number through or hearing from a representative from the insurance company um, or the government to be able to get you back in a couple of weeks time. So let's do our two week anniversary. We always do the weather forecast. Here we are. Now, here we are. This is from the Weather Network. It's a great website to go to if you want to check on the weather in Orlando for your um, future trips or if you're there already. Let's go for seven days. The first seven days from September the 24th to October the 7th. Here we are. It's from tomorrow, which is Tuesday the 24th. It's looking 90. It's hot and sunny and it's pretty much getting warmer. Thursday we should see 93 degrees and uh, over the weekend 91 on Saturday and then dropping a bit to 86 on Sunday with a little bit of cloud and going on to the next seven days which is from um, Tuesday the 1st of October. We are looking at again 90 degrees um, on the Tuesday right the way through to Friday and then on the Saturday it's going to be sunny with a bit of cloudy possibility of rain. In fact, most of those days you can see here on the video, there is a chance of rain or thunderstorm. Um, but yeah, it's still going to be pretty hot. It says it's going to feel like 97 and upwards of 104 on Thursday, the 3rd of October and the 4th. So it's going to be pretty hot and quite changeable. But there you are. That's the 14 day weather, weather report. It looks pretty good. I mean, the thing is, these are always taken into check because you can find that thunderstorms are sometimes expected and then it changes. So I'm sure you'll have a fantastic holiday and looking for some pretty good weather. Now, remember, you can get a copy of our Orlando Holiday Guide for just £5.50 for the printed version. Or if you're on Kindle or iBooks, then it's just £3.99. And it's available now. It's a 52 page step by step guide on everything you need to know about organising and going on holiday in Orlando and making sure you have the best trip that you can. So there we have it for another week. If you've got any questions, you can give us an email to info at hughhattrick.com. We always enjoy um, hearing from you, especially regarding these um, recent times with the Thomas Cook collapse. If you've got any uh, questions or if you'd like to share your experiences, then yes, 
Give us an email. We'll do our best to incorporate that on next week's show. But we hope you have a lovely time in Orlando for all our British guests and, and listeners and to our guests all around the world. Have a fantastic week and we look forward to seeing you in Orlando as soon as we can. Take care and bye just now. If you're heading to Orlando this year, then you need Patrick's Orlando Holiday Guide. It's packed full of essential and crucial information to make sure you get the best from an Orlando holiday. You can get it on Kindle or iBooks, or have a copy posted out to you for just £5.50, including free delivery to UK residents. Visit qhattrick.com now for your copy. And enjoy Orlando!